Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today, I've got for you the new German torpedo boat, the T-61. She's a sonar beast. She's kind of slow, she's kind of tanky. And right off the bat, I noticed some good numbers here. Look at that AP damage off of that main battery with that reload time, 4.15 seconds. 420 alpha, 520 alpha, sorry. Let's get our, uh, our list in line here so we can start to compare some things and just look at this right out the gate. Almost 100, at least 100 damage per shot, alpha increase over anything else. That includes the Anshin and the Aigle, the two best gunboats that we've known of so far. This is an interesting and new development because the German guns are not floaty like the French they are uh, a lot more like the Russian guns where they have lower arcs, much higher muzzle velocity, and outstanding penetration. In comparison to the other destroyers of her tier, she's a destroyer hunter. She's got that sonar kit. She's got about the same speed, roughly. They all more or less have speed boost to a different degree. Her torpedoes are fairly lackluster compared to everything else numerically. But she gets two by four. So she gets an extra set, which kind of helps out. Now, are they fast enough to really hunt destroyers with that 58 knots and everything else over 60? Mm, not really. You're going to be hard pressed with that torp speed to really do any damage in close knife fighting with these other destroyers. But you have one massive advantage that they do not. And that's sonar. This basically allows you to see their jabs, their torpedo launches, long before if you play smart. The only way that this ship really becomes a successful destroyer hunter is by playing smart. So let's jump on in and let's show you the videos. We're going to jump on in here. And uh, as you can quickly see, I'm going to be pushing up a cap. Um, we all know this map. I believe it's Big Race. And this pod looks hell-bent on controlling that cap. I'm taking my sweet time getting there because T-61. But immediately you start to see me chunking away. I pop on sonar and look at that. How quickly those torpedoes are detected. And I can stop and dodge them with pretty much extreme ease. And this pod is more or less helpless as he gets gunned down. Our team captured in lieu of the those torpedoes missing their intended target. This is where the T-61 really stopped. Hunting down, getting in there, and clearing out the cap. She's a much more presence-based ship than we've had in recent time. Now let's get into the speed. She can hit 40 knots when she's kitted for speed which is the big reason we went to speed over concealment. That little extra 5% kick actually allows you to the run down most of the other destroyers in the team. The other it's kind of necessitated. Now this, uh, this Byron is AFK. So I'm going to ignore him, and I see that carrier basically unprotected. And I'm going to charge down that Indy because he could, he's giving us a little bit of hassle, not me specifically. Carriers are not necessarily uh, 
ideal to leave in the battle for a long we hit the time. Enemy. We're gonna chase him down. We're gonna get nice and close. We're Target gonna take him a little bit before we get in and deliver a fatal blow with the torpedoes. Just to give you an idea of how anemic we really are in damage. Uh, just kind of check that nice out right shot. there. Most destroyed. Enemy ship destroyed. Um, we'll be able to finish off that independence with one set. Of course. Engine not boost the, activated. The handshake. Go hit the enemy. But certainly the Aigle. That's our Nice shot. In comparison, this ship kind of actually reminds me more of a beefed up Farragut than really. Gun trajectories are just phenomenal. As the player comes back to the background, we get a challenge. Ah, fuck. Target him. hit! <coughs> He's going down without too much, uh, too much effort. Took a pretty full set of torpedoes, and without much effort, this map, this match, easily conquered, and the enemy team overthrown. Now, that wasn't overly exciting. That's just some basic destroyer play. Come on, Thatch. I'm sure you've Our got something better the for area. us in here. Well, we're going to jump into some of the clips and show you what this ship can really offer. Promise you. She's not that much of a disappointment. Now, we're going to jump in Golden Channel. Everybody knows this map, and everybody hates destroyers. Because destroyers can get into the cap, they can throw torpedoes, they won't be seen unless they're dumb and they get spotted. Right? Let's throw sonar into the mix. We're going to light it all up. I'm pretty sure that in this game, once you spot a torpedo, it does not go back to being undetected. So it's perma spotted once you spot it. Our team captured the area. Of the range. Sometimes spotted. understanding the finer torpedo mechanics can help, um, especially when you're trying to break down a ship like this that uses a different consumable than is normally um, found in its class. Of course, the Germans in World War II were one of the first people First countries, I should say, to start using sonar in uh, the military capacity, and they used it extremely well. One may add, specifically hunting um, enemy convo uh, convoys and caravans. They would uh, just absolutely annihilate their trade routes and enemy sonar and torpedoes would be a big deal to do with that. But, uh, among other things. Now you can see here, pretty much status quo, that Farragut tries to throw some torps on me, I grab it with the tail end of my sonar, I stop, I'm gonna take one, because he plays the situation well. is under control. Um, and, again, without too much effort, I get my four guns into this battle by swinging around, and that Farragut is uh, dispatched rather than we were gonna send him back to port. Not too bad. Barely even took that much damage. That's how much more DPM the T-61 has as a destroyer over the rest Need of the back class. Up. The only thing that even sports a reload uh, fairly close to it is the Mansion and the Aigle. But the Aigle is a rather difficult ship to play. Especially against this. Target hit! Igle has the range to deal with the T-61. You have to remember that shell velocity is a massive factor. Being able to put shells on target, especially for a destroyer, you only have often four or five guns tops. This one has four, four 120. Um, with that German AP, shot. I'd actually advise you stay with the AP because the AP on this ship has such awful penetration, we're gonna show you some here, that it doesn't really, no pens, right there. 
it doesn't even really penetrate too much of what it's going after. Nice the no pens right there. Those 140s, we need to see the two, the 280s for us to get fired. Now that means right there that those shots aren't penning. And if you don't pen with your HP, you have no chance of starting fires. So we're going to jump on in up to your gunboat. And this is just to kind of give you an idea of the, the DPM area. that the T-61 really has. How advantageous this Target sonar hit. is in engaging other destroyers, specifically up to your gunboat destroyers like the Hot, which is arguably one of the strongest ships for the tier. Locked on. We hit the enemy. We're both throwing torp traps. I'm a lot closer to him, and this is what I was talking to you about. The slowness of those torpedoes and being almost useless in destroyer night fights. You'll see that despite me being inside a kilometer and a half, that this Mahan is still fairly easy to dodge my torpedoes. And that's the difference that those three four knots make between them. Um, they are very much to be relegated more towards cruisers and more specifically battleships uh, because of their speed as well as their range. So not all is lost. But you'll see that I'm going to go down pretty quickly. Thank you for watching and tune in next time.